welcome to this edition of Able Den On Air. I'm your host, Lauren Seiler. I'm Mom Seiler. And this is the program that focuses on the needs, concerns, and achievements of the differently abled in Vermont and beyond. And besides Orca Media, uh, we, are, um, we are now in Burlington on Channel 17, um, which is um, the Democracy Channel. And uh, we are broadcasted on there as well. Uh, we would like to welcome Ron Rondon, our, our sports anchor for this uh, for this show. Uh, welcome, Ron. Hello there. And uh, what is the show that you do? Of course, Road Trip with Ron Rondon. It's kicking off season number five coming up on October 5th on Brooklyn Free Speech Network. Wow. Okay, now Brooklyn Free, Brooklyn, Brooklyn Free Speech Network um, is what? What kind of uh, station is it again? So for well, people we're representing all of most of Brooklyn, all of Brooklyn, of course, representing from our friends at Optimum and Spectrum, and also RCN, and also on Verizon Files. So in any of these areas, check it out. And of course, we're also online on at BreakArtsMedia.org. Also on our social media platforms, you can check it out on our. Facebook page, Road Trip with Ron Rodden, and of course on Road Trip TV One on YouTube. So a lot of pop and some other social medias here is we'll put it on the air, we'll post it. If you're watching Road Trip right now, we'll post all this on the air and you'll see what I'm talking about. Okay. So um, explain to me what have you been doing on Road Trip uh, from season one all the way up to now? Well, for the last four seasons, from pop culture to entertainment to news, to exciting charitable events. We've done a lot of them, including recently the tape. This was, this one of them will be featured in season number five. We did a special benefit over at uh, Trough Fontaine in Avenue in Brooklyn. It was a uh, one of our friends, Jack Giablanco, Blanco, we got a big shout out to him, did a special benefit that to raise money for St. Jude's Children's Charities. And it's a St. Jude's Children's Hospital in, of course, Memphis, Tennessee. It's for real, believe me. And we raised sorry, shirts and lighted friendship necklaces. I won one before. It was just fantastic. You guys and raised a lot of money? And these goals to them. And out of all that, raised over $6,200 raised to uh, St. Jude's Children's Charity. So it's a Now, St. Jude's, so th this is... Part of St. Jude's Children's Hospital, yes? That's correct. Okay. And St. Jude's Children's Hospital, that's a cancer hospital? Yes, it is. It is for cancer. Kids who have cancer yes, who want is. to end fight. And it says, according to St. Jude's, it says, they don't pay they buy their own pockets. It's the people to donate whatever they do and to help the kids get better out of all kinds of surgeries and all kinds of stuff. Now, because there's also some other... Cancer hospitals in New York. You have uh, Memorial Sloan Kettering. You have some others. But what makes St. Jude's uh, a little bit different than some of the other hospitals? It's for kids. And remember, kids who had cancer who were battling to uh, about a number of illnesses like uh, a throat cancer to pancreatic to just a number of kind of cancers. And we always pray for a lot of kids. And that's what this great organization that uh, Jackie Blanco, who organized this event, it's fantastic. It was a lot of music, it was a lot of fun, having a great time, mm. and of course we got some terrific performers who's fantastic, including uh, our good friend Teo, who is the voice of Naples. He did sensational, making great Italian songs. Mm. He's like an operatic voice. He is absolutely fantastic. Uh, we got uh, Maria Bernudo is also performing, and of course Francis is also performing. It's fantastic, and you'll see all the highlights during the season. Mm. And among the other mm. stuff as well, we got the San Gennaro Festival this year, oh, including yeah. the meatball eating contest. Well, and okay, speaking about meatballs, um, oh, oh, yeah. um, we, we here at um, Orca Media um, just debuted um, Able, well, we, we do Able Then on Air, of course, but we just debuted, uh, my wife and I just debuted a new show uh, called um, Able to Cook, which deals with people with special needs and cooking. And since you say about meatballs, tell us a little bit more 
about that? What's going on with the meatballs? Well, the meatball eating contest is some brave and fierce eaters who compete for the for the top prize anyway of two hundred fifty dollars. That's what they wow. Know. So is, is the meatball no. was the meatball eating contest similar to the um? Is it similar to the Nathan's hot dog eating contest? It's like a similar. It's a little different between the hot dog eating contest mm -hmm. and the meatball eating contest because the the sponsor, by the way, is Chacha's. That's located in um, Little Italy, mm -hmm. and I want to get a big shout out to Karen King, who's the, one of the restaurateurs and one part owner of Chacha's, along with the fantastic Tony Danza. And you all know who Tony Danza is. Yes, we know. Yeah, boss. Mm -hmm. yeah. Who's the boss? So he was he, the, he was there, and you interviewed him. Well, we didn't get a chance to interview him, but he was there recently uh, back in our third season that uh, Cousin Brucey interviewed the great Tony Danza, who's also part restaurateur and owner, and he's also does for the Police Athletic League, and if I win that competition, I'm going to be donating about a fifth of the proceeds will go to the Police Athletic League here throughout the New York City area. Mm -hmm. Hopefully, if I win, but that's will, but that's going to be an early start, but it's going to be great. And it's fantastic, and we'll have some highlights of the event, and that's going to be great. It's going to be a lot of fun. We'll get Joey Before Reynolds. We get... Let me tell you who's there. Joey Reynolds will be here with one of the judges. Karen Keynes, I told you before, she's going to be judging and singing the national anthem. She's a terrific, all-around American mm -hmm. pop standard singer. She is absolutely fantastic. So wow. come on down. Before we get before we get to um, uh, sports, uh, what else have you been doing? So you have the fifth season coming up. A big uh, season number five. Yeah. How many? How many? Um, how many shows have you done th thus far? Well, for the fifth season, it will be show number one hundred and forty this year. Wow! Mm -hmm. Wow! Wow! Congratulations. Thank you very much. Because it takes it takes a lot of people to get to uh, show 140. Yes, we got a good crew. We have a great staff. We started with just about two people. We have a growing staff of uh, contributors to the show, from Mark Kurtz to Phil Manners, or and Phil started got me into this, and you got me into this, and then, and then you got Audra Blackwood, who's also doing the camera work. Uh, Nikki Ferguson camera work this season. Also, we got uh, some good photography as well. Uh, Mike Wright, who's a fantastic guy in Midwood, who not only covers some events, but he also did the Italian events as well. He's also going to be contributing this year. We're going to have, we have a very great crew this season, and we can't wait. Mm. What made you I, want to get into broadcasting? What was the major thing that, you know, despite your special needs, what, what was the major thing that wanted you to get into broadcasting? Well, you know, my big dream is to like to get into sports. That's the first thing that started me off here. And then when D says, do you have a good, everybody told me you have a good radio voice. That, that's what got me into internet radio. Uh, one of our friends, uh, Kismir Elberg, who used to hold Polly mm -hmm. on, on, what's the record, on talk show radio and also, if I remember the other one from before, but you, you, he has a great show, and then when you got me hosting into this, I got my weekend show for the last seven seasons, and it was a lot of fun. Is, so, you, is your weekend show still going on? At this point? Not at this time, because right now with focusing TV, because TV is the people want to fill up our audience and build a lot of good fans up there because we have a terrific, terrific show, and we got everybody on the mm -hmm. internet, everybody on social media likes the show everybody and we got and we also put in a little extra effort we also put a segment every season that will be the nfl pick it will be sports fan nfl picks challenge which i'll be doing along the season during road trip which is going to be a lot more fun because we want because i know arlene you're in it this season again this yeah season again we got some terrific contestants who are facing for bragging rights and the title. Uh, this season, of course, um, Eric Spice, who is terrific in New Jersey. He's our defending champion last season. But Elizabeth Melton is not with us, unfortunately. She recently passed away back in September. Uh, so we're going to crown a brand new woman champion this season. So this is going to be a lot of fun. It's going to be a lot mm -hmm. of fun. It's going to be a two uh, segments. It's going to be two segment double season one. So 
winners from the first half of the season, which is 1 to 8, will face the winners from the second segment, from 9 to 16, will face in the season, in season week 17 showdown to determine our champion for the season. So this is going to be a lot of fun, and if you wanted to join us, you can go to my Facebook page mm-hmm. and just check out Facebook and type in Sports Fan NFL Challenge. That's the Sports Fan NFL Picks Challenge on Facebook. Mm-hmm. And join us on no, You don't have to pay anything. It's a lot of fun. It's regular. Check it out. It's a lot of fun. Um, so in terms of, you know, baseball, now this year uh, the New York Yankees have been doing pretty good. Uh, Boston, eh, yeah. Who well, is your? Yeah, he's already locked up the Eastern Division. That's why. Who Who is your all time favorite team, and why do you think they should go to the um, to the World Series? Well, you know the Yankees have won twenty seven championships already. Looking for win the so twenty eighth championship coming up this year, and look how big the Yankees got. You got a power hitter lane. Uh, Aaron Judge, who has been outstanding, 52 home runs, rookie. You can't say a better rookie of the year than he is. He's outstanding. Then you got John Carlos Stanton, who fired for the Miami Marlins, who's been outstanding. He's in there. He had a full start. He came up and contributed. Gary Sanchez, another home run hitter, who's also a home run derby champion. He did a magnificent mm-hmm. job. And then you got the best pitcher, Ramos Chapman, who yeah. is the closer. You are looking at a great pitching duo this year. Mm-hmm. So you'll be looking at them. So you can see the Yankees in the World Series. On the other hand, the defending champion Houston Astros, which I'm surprised they got it all. This is their first ever championship. And you got a lot of things from Ross Springer and a number of uh, great players who have been incredibly done. Uh, so this is going to be like a championship, an uh, ALCS championship rematch. You'll be looking at them mm-hmm. this season. And then you yeah. look at the Washington Nationals, another good team with Bryce Hopper. It could be you could see them in their first ever World Series for their franchise. Mm. Well, be, some they, so I, I mean I think the real big money makers here, uh, because you know those uh, those money makers are the ones that have the the top salaries. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. uh, the Yankees and Boston, because. Yeah. Um, all the other teams are small. Well, they're not small, but they don't have um, such big hitters as um, like the Mets, you know. Like, well, the Mets, the Yankees, and and, and Boston Red Sox. Absolutely. Yeah. And of course, think about the other teams also who got uh, big salaries. Like for example, Texas, Texas Rangers is one team, and another team. You look at the Dodgers, who's looking outstanding. After a terrific World Series appearance and came that short when Houston won the championship, there's another possibility. So you're looking at great teams who Yeah, out. Uh, uh, for example, we, I mean, we talk about special needs, but we, uh, in terms of baseball, you've got people such as um, the wife of um, Thurman Munson, who, right. who has a foundation. Uh, and she gives money towards autism. You have people such as uh, uh, Jorge Posada, whom I've interviewed in the past in, in, in New York, in the Bronx. He's who, outstanding. He's one of the best players. Dealt. Jorge Posada has a, a foundation for autism. Hmm. Um, and he so also got Derek Jeter. Derek Jeter's yeah. foundation, yep. Yeah. Uh, no huh? So looking at the great charities, Everybody contributes because let me tell you something. They're the best kind of Yankee players went on to do their own foundation. And this is why they're the best players ever. So you give a lot of them to say yeah. thanks. Mm-hmm. And that's why all yeah. these players did. So um, in terms of football, um, who, who do you think is, is the best this year um, well, looking you know, going at the, forward? Well, let's see. Best of the teams, I'm really surprised. You know, the surprising team, because I, we, since we're taping the show today, by the way, hey, um, on our, since we're taping it, the Cleveland Browns surprised us all so far. They already won. They got a tie. They lost one. And now they won one because they beat the Jets. Yeah. And how about this great Cleveland Browns team? This is going to be, this is like, this is like a rebuilding of every single loss there is. 
is if you go back like an old 16 team. And right now they're 1-1-1 one, one, and one going into mm-hmm. week four coming up. And then you've got the Jets. That's who got a very good quarterback, but they came up a little short this year. Yeah. And the Giants, well, so far 0-2, but it's time to put a change around on the team. But to my knowledge, I'm looking at a terrific Super Bowl. I'd like to see the Eagles go back to the Super Bowl could win their second championship because I am surprised. I'm surprised by the East team. And big shout out to the fans mm-hmm. of Philadelphia. Best team. I hope it's, I'm not, surprised I hope it's not, well. I hope it's not the New England Patriots again. Eek. Yeah, I don't want to say Patriots. But yeah. we beat the Patriots, thank God for that. So Yeah. We had Tom Brady. Oh, the wife. The wife gets so mad. The wife. <laughs> um, okay, let's uh, talk about something else for a second. Um, recently, uh, in New Jersey, um, this past week, uh, recently there was a gentleman um, in the group home. Uh, well, he was in a, a New Jersey group home who had gotten uh, involved in a hit and run. Uh, he and he passed away in. Um, Garfield, New Jersey, a man has been arrested in connection with a uh, fatal hit and run in New Jersey, officials say. Uh, Paul Fisher, 59, of uh, New Jersey, was arrested in multiple charges, including leaving the scene of a fatal accident and endangering uh, a, an injured victim. Uh, Garfield police responded to the call of a pedestrian struck, struck <coughs> by a hit and run vehicle uh, this past Monday at 7 p.m. when officers found 42-year-old Giovanni Rivera lying in the roadway on MacArthur Avenue and um, with serious injuries. Rivera (coughs) Rivera was transported to the hospital where he (coughs) later passed away from his injuries Wednesday morning. uh, your uh, thoughts on that? You know, it's 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 sad because you know, uh, I know I see <coughs> a lot of people who are, who are disability, and I've never seen a hit and run driver who is got hit. But the only question is, did they capture the man that yes, is? Yes, yes, yes. They yes. Did. Oh, they good. Just, they, because they, they got a lot to get a lot to learn because this runner, this hit and run driver, has got plenty to say about because I don't like. What he did to this, um, to this, um, what is that? To this, uh, um, to because when you when you deal with, um, uh, you know, cars and pedestrians, you it, it's considered murder or um, oh, yeah. vehicular homicide. Yeah. When when um, uh, when someone passes away. Absolutely, but I'm going to say one thing for sure because you know. They should have put like uh, like protection lights. You know, over in Patterson, New Jersey, they need some special kind of lights for disabilities. If anybody has a walk problem or anything, they have to need a special lighted path to pass to let the protections go first before the drivers does. Because what he did to the drivers without the light or with the stop sign, does he really go for the stop sign? That could be possible. Does he stop? Or does he go speeding like about 60 miles an hour? That's bad. It's time that Congress or the representatives in, the, in their states to suggest to put some lighted uh, uh, roads because the street properties like in the white and the red box and everything else, it's not going to be enough. It's time to put them to work to put a lighted yeah. uh, walkway a so when the pass when the projections pass through and we'll let the car stop, that's what they have to do. Because yeah, I agree. I agree because this way don't this way, don't this, be so mm-hmm. co- don't be so close to the phone. You you're breaking up a little bit. Go ahead. Because when when the pass when the pedestrians pass by to it, it will be very important and understandable to let the car stop and let them <clears> pass. Because it's time to start building up and get some more resources and everything else yeah. to go away. And that's what they got to do that. Mm. I agree because there should be something there. Okay, right. so so getting back to sports, um, before we end, because we have a couple of minutes left here, 
Um, uh, your predictions for 2019 and the uh, Super Bowl? Well, let's see. I was still going to say Philadelphia will go into one of them, but I like to see an upset. The first timers, and I like to see first time since, since Philadelphia did it for the first time. I want to see another first time get into a Super Bowl, and that's got to be the Jacksonville Jaguars. The mm-hmm. reason I say Jacksonville, they came that close to winning a Super Bowl. But in the regular season at home, they got their revenge and beat New England last week. So if I think if this continues to be the case, we could see a Philadelphia-Jacksonville Super Bowl mm. in their presence. So this is going to be a very important year, and i like to see that happen. And, of course, if any football fans in Philadelphia, I know I'm proud of them. I applaud them for what they did. And I hope the next word, if Jacksonville should win the Super Bowl, I will also respect them. They will have their first ever celebrations in the city of Jacksonville. So either way, mm-hmm. this is going to be a Super Super Bowl coming up, Super Bowl 52. So it's going to be very uh, What's your predictions with basketball this year? Because, uh, you know, we have a pretty good matchup. Well, I like the... I like to see the Knicks and the Lakers battle out, but Knicks is not good. Um, right now, we got we got LeBron heading to Los Angeles, so this is going to be a big, big difference right now. Why do you say the Knicks are not good? What, what happened? The bad. Last year, they were a little bit unsure, like they're in fourth place. But i like to see if they could do better to get at least to third or second place in order to get into the playoffs because they're going to go like a number set and becoming a seven-seeded team, and that's going to be a very important challenge for the Knicks because if they don't get to the playoffs, right. they can get a good effort on that. What about the Brooklyn Nets? For the Brooklyn Nets, well, I think they're going to get at least to a 12th seed. So mm-hmm. that's going to be very – that's going to be a 12th seed, but that's going to be – in the number of eight seeds. So it's mm-hmm. going to be, we'll like to see two New York teams get into the seven and eight seeds. Yeah. And then hope they can work their way out to the NBA the second yeah, round. So sure, yeah. That's, that's as far as we can go. Yeah, maybe they need to build a staple center. Well, since you're talking about the Lakers, maybe they need to build a staple center here in, or some kind of big, huge uh, basketball stadium here in Vermont. Uh, then we can really have some ma- matchups. And it would be great. If they can put one more, like, if they can, if, however, there's just one thing I would say. That since you guys got the Vermont Lake Monsters right there in, in Montefiore, can it be a very, you know, this is, this is my question here. If they have a baseball team in front, because they're looking for one more extension team, or a hockey extension team, because Vermont is home well, to Vermont, hockey. Well, <clears throat> Vermont has, I mean, uh, UVM, uh, the uh, Catamounts, uh, at, at, at UVM College, the uh, College of uh, Vermont, uh, we have a pretty good hockey team this year. It's it's gone to semifinals and finals, and you know, um, yeah. in the past. So we we have a pretty good team. Well, right now uh, the NHL already got thirty one teams. So if they could do something, is they can build a well, it's NC, it's NCAA, it's NCAA it's Ron. It could be thirty. We have we have NCAA hockey. You know. Yeah. yeah, we know, we know. But yeah. can we get a professional team if they can make it as an expansion team? They need one more expansion team so they're going to make it all even to 32 teams. So we've only got 31 so far at this point anyway. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that well, would be um, we would like mm-hmm. to thank you. Oh, uh, well, <clears throat> What do you think about the people suffering in, in the, that storm, Florence, Hurricane Florence? All Horrible. right. Well, I, yeah, we well, have a couple minutes to talk my, about that. Let me say to my final word before we go. I want to say our fourth and prayers to all the victims down in in South Carolina and North Carolina. I got a friend named Ben Melsky. Ben, if you're watching, big hi to you. I want to say our fourth and prayers, and we hope we can build, rebuild this whole thing. I hope the Red Cross can help a lot of people during this hurricane yeah. season. So we we'll so pray too. Yeah. They, they. They're, they're supplying them clothes and shelter. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah, they're supplying them with clothes and shelter and stuff. Because ha- Hurricane Sandy was just as bad uh, as this. Yeah. And, like and, and, and you saw the rest of the rest of some animals in the, in the cages. They rested some animals. Exactly. That, that's what. So we'll hope we can get some rescuers and hope we can rescue the best. So, yeah. so, like home for the so really quick. Uh, what is your uh, website again? Okay, you can check out 
Facebook.com, look up for Road Trip with Ron Rodden, or you can go to YouTube and look for the Road Trip TV <clears throat> one channel. And, of course, uh, we also got our Pinterest, on mm -hmm. LinkedIn, on Google+, Plus, and also on that, did I get everybody? And on Twitter. That's, that's Ron underscore Road Trip TV. And, of course... Again, you'll get a copy of this program so you can show it in, in uh, Brooklyn as yeah. well. Um, just to let you know, uh, Abel de Nornaire is also, uh, besides ARCA Media, we are um, broadcasting on Channel 17 in Burlington. Um, just to let you know, before we end, this program today uh, and uh, this week is, uh, is, um, is in memory of someone who here who died in Montpelier, Vermont. Um, Solomon Jenkins uh, senselessly pa passed away uh, in an automobile accident, and uh, we just would like to say um, uh, to to his family and friends, uh, we are truly sorry. Uh, sorry, and uh, we are um, you know saying condolences to the family. And this program is is. Um, is to his memory, Solomon Jenkins. Uh, we would like to thank Ron Rondon for uh, joining us on this edition of Abel Den Arnea. Ron, thank you. It's a pleasure to be mine, and uh, we can't wait to see you guys on our show and, of course, also the cooking one. You can send us a yeah, we're going to send you copies of that as well. Okay. And uh, that is also running on Channel 17 in Burlington, Vermont. Uh, this puts an end to this edition of Able Dinner and Air. I'm Lauren Seiler. I'm Arlene Seiler. See you next time.